Hey, what's up guys? Warren Ness here, Rock Sculptor, Tips from the Stude, another episode. Today we're gonna discuss um, using Stage 2 Accelerator. What that is, is a, it's a dry admix component added to the carbs so you can speed up the drying process. Today we're working on a sample, um, rock sample for a larger project that's gonna be in Japan. Really cool. This is another rock type. If you guys caught the other video, we did another style of rock. This is going to be a little softer as far as the edges and some of the form work. So um, just to show you the backbones of the sample, you got the scratch coat on front. You can check out the video on that. And there's your foam substrate in the back. I'm probably just going to roll some flat black on there just for uh, a nice presentation. Okay, guys, so let's just jump right in. Okay, so here's, here's the math class on it. So the stage two accelerator is dosed on the amount of pounds of Portland you're using in your mix. The sand and water and fiber, anything else like that you're using is thrown out just based off the Portland cement content. And today we're gonna be dosing this at 2%. Now you can go from 0.5 to 4% on this. And just so you know for the math, we currently have 15 pounds of Portland cement that we're gonna be adding this to. So if you do the math on that, that comes out to about 4.8 ounces. We're probably just gonna round up to about five ounces. So let's just do that. Okay, so we measured off the five ounces and I'm just showing you where that lands. You can pick that up. It's less than a quarter of a liter. And then about, looks like two ounces on here. So, all right, let's get this added. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mix up that uh, material. First, I'm gonna wet this down, as you guys know. Um, if you've been following the other videos, it's very important to wet down your scratch coat. Now, you're not gonna wanna go super heavy on top right here because you're on a horizontal plane. That water's just gonna sit there. If this was vertical, the water's gonna drip downward. Okay, so just kind of a tidbit of information there. I'm gonna go ahead and wet this down pretty good. It's gonna take me about 10 minutes to batch up that mix in which this should be nice and damp and not too wet. Okay guys, so we're batching up that mix. Just wanna let you know I am icing the water. I'm taking ice cubes, adding it to water to ice that up. Um, quick note why, why I'm doing that and using the accelerator. The ice water is gonna help slow things down. The acceleration portion of it's gonna get it to that point where I can start carving on it. Why I'm adding ice is because I really don't know what the look I'm going for here creatively. Some of these things just happen. Some of you guys have been carving a while, you know what I'm talking about, that when you start pushing and pulling the mud around and texturizing, things do appear, and those can be interpreted and enhanced and then carved. So just want to give you the backdrop on that. Okay, guys, so we got the mud mixed up. This is still damp in some areas, but some areas need a little more water. So we're gonna go ahead and spritz that down. Again, you don't want to pulls of water. You just want to make sure a lot of it uh, is dampened or sufficiently dampened. Again, keep in mind, this is a horizontal surface, so water's gonna sit there as opposed to on a vertical, the water's gonna be running downward. Okay. Okay, so we've got our first layer rubbed in. We've got about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch. All we're trying to do is work that mud into the scratch coat. That, that ensures a good bond and it's not gonna allow water, if this was an exterior piece or a water feature of some sort, if you don't get that worked in, you can create voided areas in which water can become encapsulated, lead to efflorescence, freeze and thaw pops, etc. Okay, so our Materials rubbed in. I'm gonna go ahead and apply about, plops about like that. Now that's about about an inch thick, but here's the deal. When I go ahead and flatten out my trowel, that depth does change. Just keep that in mind. Okay, I got my material on. You can kind of see the depth. You know, there's a plop like there. Got about that much on, so about two inches. Again, once I flatten it down, it's gonna be a plus and minus, you know, three quarters of an inch, give or take. Thank you. 
Okay guys, quick tip on subject matter. So like I said, these are samples being sent off for a specific project. What I try to include in this sample is some of the characteristics of the rock. Um, and one of those characteristics is texture. As you can see in this video, we've been rounding off the edges. This rock is a little softer, more eroded, as opposed to the other one was more of a sharper basaltic granite. So just to, just to note when you're doing your samples, keep in mind of those characteristics. Okay guys, we let this thing bake for about a little over an hour. It's ready to do kind of an initial pass. And that initial pass is just gonna go ahead and knock off some of the burrs or some of the trial marks left behind. And since this is gonna have a more eroded finish, I'm gonna make a second pass and kind of needle out. So this is gonna be two phases to this. Okay, so I'm, I'm working my way around this. Quick note, um, we're not gonna be brushing off any crumbs. So when I carve or subtract material, that material falls on top of the uh, surface. This is on a horizontal plane. What you don't wanna do is start brushing your details away and brushing the crumbs. We're gonna use compressed air. For that, um, this same technique applies if you're like doing some uh, treads and risers for a landscape job. Let's say you're doing some carved stairs. Same thing, if you got details and some nice texture on your tread portion, which is your horizontal um, piece to the stair, what happens is if you brush, you lose a lot of your details. So compressed stair is preferred. Okay guys, that's a wrap. Just wanna note, as you can see, you probably see me using the chip brush. Make sure it's dry. What I usually do on, on eroded looks and, and finishes like this one, I'll go ahead in a circular motion, kind of deglaze it or knock the sheen off. I didn't do a whole lot of carving on this because I didn't have to. A lot of it's just soft edges that I got in the roller and the different bristle brushes. What this does is kind of degloss that. And what happens is the sand particles get disturbed off the surface. They get kicked up and I'm actually rubbing them in. I just don't want the whole thing to look like I just hit it with a texture roller. So I'm, this adds a little bit of variety to the surface. So uh, I kind of think it's a neat uh, trick. It helps taking the stain color well. It's gonna bite in a little more. And as we flip this over tomorrow when it's hard, we can show you what that looks like. And obviously the painting, paintings we're gonna be doing probably two to three days from now after we let this dry for a couple of days. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Catch you on the next one. Peace.